Hello, everyone. In the past, people used many tools similar to today's system to conduct their transactions. When looking at the last century of the evolution of the international monetary system, it becomes clear that the international monetary system refers to the system and rules governing the use of and exchange of money worldwide and between countries. Each country has its own currency, and the international monetary system governs the rules related to the valuation and exchange of these currencies. To better understand the monetary system we use today, let's examine its recent history, starting from the periods of the gold standard. This can be divided into four periods. The first is the gold standard era between 1870-1930s. The second, the Great Depression era between 1930-1944. The third, the Bretton Woods system era, starting between 1944-1973. And the fourth is the period encompassing the floating exchange rate system. The gold standard era, in effect from the 1870s until the early years of World War I in 1914, was the first globally used monetary system. Generally, the system defined that each country would peg its currency's value to a certain amount of gold. This way, a fixed exchange rate between the currencies of countries based on their gold content was established. In the gold standard system, a certain degree of free trade was possible, since there was no government intervention in the foreign exchange market. Governments were only responsible for maintaining their currency's gold content. The government did this by buying and selling gold at a determined price, intervening in the gold market. The gold standard was continuously applied worldwide from the 1870s until the beginning of World War I. The primary countries implementing it, especially in the world economy of that time, were Western Europe and the UK. The exchange rates of national currencies were determined by their gold value. A shining era of the gold standard was experienced until World War I. Also, during the era of the gold standard system, financial crises in international payments were quite rare. However, the application of the gold standard system was suspended with the onset of World War I. The war economy led to the removal of some countries' currencies from the gold linkage but a regular system like the gold standard was needed later on since it couldn't be a permanent solution for the world economy. Consequently, after the war, countries returned to the gold standard system one after another. The first country to return to the gold standard was the United States in 1919. By 1928, all countries had returned to the gold standard. However, accepting pre-war parities in this way led to new monetary difficulties in the future. Because of inflationary differences during World War I, it was evident that there were varying competitive differences between countries. This second era of the gold standard in the history of world monetary systems was unsuccessful. Above all, the fundamental conditions necessary for such a system to exist were not present. As a result, the second gold standard system ended. The Great Depression, known as the 1929 crisis starting in the USA, hastened the collapse of the gold standard. Countries subsequently abandoned the gold standard, one after another. In 1931, the UK, and in 1933, the USA left it. The convertibility difference of national currencies ended with the termination of the gold standard. After these events, world trade was driven into a deadlock because the multilateral balancing mechanism had disappeared. The USA then set the price of one ounce of gold at $35 in 1934, after the devaluation of the dollar. This system was adhered to until December 1971, and during this period, there was no change in the devaluation of the dollar. In July 1944, representatives from 44 countries gathered in Breton Woods, New Hampshire, to establish a new international monetary system. The Breton Woods system was adopted. This system is the name of the new international monetary system agreement after the gold standard. Decisions taken at the Bretton Woods meeting led to the establishment of the IMF and the World Bank, officially transitioning to the Bretton Woods monetary system. The system is also referred to as the IMF system, or Adjustable Fixed Exchange Rate System, as its implementation was the responsibility of the IMF. The features of the new international monetary order resulting from the Bretton Woods Agreement. The difference in the currencies of the countries adhering to the agreement was calculated relative to the dollar. The dollar remained the only national currency comparable to gold. According to the agreement, one ounce of gold, Shachir's $35.
The key feature of the Bretton Woods system, the key currency system, was that the dollar was pegged to gold and a fixed currency. On the other hand, it was the common denominator to which all national currencies were tied. Thanks to these features, the dollar had certain functions in the international economic and financial field. As a reserve instrument, since the dollar was frequently encountered in external payments, it served as an external reserve currency that countries accumulated for use in their external payments alongside gold. The dollar became an international payment instrument. Consequently, it was widely used in international payments. International debts, credits, and other financial values were pegged to the dollar or calculated in dollars. As an intervention tool, since all countries calculated their currency's official significance in dollars, the interventions they made in the market, central banks' foreign exchange purchases and sales, to keep the resulting difference constant, were defined in terms of dollars. All these features granted the American dollar key currency status in the international economy. Especially after World War II and into the early 1950s, there was a serious dollar shortage in all countries. At the same time, Japan and Western European countries, especially those that lost in the war, were struggling to repair their economies. Since the USA was the only state that could provide the tools needed to repair their economies, all countries' gold reserves flowed to the USA. However, an unnoticed situation occurred in the early 1950s. For the first time, America's payment balance was in deficit. The main reason for the collapse of the Bretton Woods system was the continuity of the USA's external deficits. From 1958 onwards, countries faced a dollar surplus problem instead of a dollar shortage. During this period, the American dollar was highly valued. Consequently, a devaluation of the dollar was necessary. However, its devaluation was prevented due to the dollar's key currency status. It was impossible for America to do this alone. When Western European countries and Japan emerged as valuable economic forces in the 1960s, having achieved development, they aimed to convert the dollars they collected at the Federal Reserve Bank, Fed, into gold as soon as possible. Their goal was to restore the gold stocks melted during the war and increase their gold reserves. The French president at the time declared war on the dollar. He criticized the system for the privileges it gave America and stated that gold prices needed to be increased by two or three times and a return to the gold standard was necessary. In short, the advantages this system provided to America also benefited its competitors. The first major crisis in this system began in 1960 with a run on gold. As America's gold stocks gradually dwindled, speculators, thinking the dollar would be devalued against gold, began buying in the gold market. In response to the excessive demand, from the USA, France, Germany, England, Switzerland, Belgium, Italy, the Netherlands, the London Gold Pool was formed to maintain the gold price at $35. The main purpose of this fund was to keep the gold price unchanged and assist in sales to the Bank of England. The USA was the country that met most of the sales. In 1968, the members of the gold fund decided to support the market gold prices. The official gold price would continue in central bank transactions. Thus, a dual price system for gold was adopted. The first was the price formed in the market according to supply and demand, and the second was the official price valid in transactions at central banks. The dual pricing system caused a significant decline in the monetary function. By the late 1960s, persistent instabilities had become a fundamental feature of the international financial field. The USA, under these conditions, wanted countries with a surplus in their balance of payments, like Germany and Japan, to increase the value of their currencies against the dollar. But they were reluctant to do so. This is because their external payment surpluses provided them with significant economic and political power. Exporters and farmers were pressuring the government not to increase their value. Eventually, in 1971, U.S. President Nixon took various measures in the hope of forcing Western European countries and Japan to revalue. Progress was made, and at a meeting at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, the relevant countries reached an agreement on the devaluation of the dollar. With the Smithsonian Resolutions of 1971, the dollar was devalued by about 9% against other currencies. The official price of gold was raised from $35 to $38. Then it was increased to $42.3. However, despite all the adjustments and measures taken, 
a price-fixing situation in the international financial markets could not be achieved. In response, Japan, Canada, and the Scandinavian countries soon allowed their currencies to fluctuate. Following them, on March 16th, the European Economic Community, EEC, countries also announced they were letting their national currencies float against the dollar. This led to the end of the Bretton Woods system with fixed exchange rates. With the collapse of the Bretton Woods system in 1973 and the amendment of the IMF Articles of Agreement in 1978, the world economy adopted exchange rate systems that ranged between floating exchange rates, where government intervention was minimal, and fixed exchange rates, where the national currency was pegged to a basket of foreign currencies. The Floating Exchange Rate System The Floating Exchange Rate System is a system where a country's currency value in the market is freely determined according to supply and demand. The formation of exchange rates is left to market forces. There is generally no intervention in the fluctuation of exchange rates, although sometimes interventions in the foreign exchange market can prevent price fluctuations. Historically, when examining the floating exchange rate system, IMF countries rapidly convened in 1973 due to the increase in uncertainty in the international monetary system and decided to leave their international exchange systems to free fluctuation. America, in particular, was unhappy with the policies of countries like Japan and Germany, which had trade surpluses and restrictive measures. Finally, in September, an agreement was reached between the parties. The USA would abandon its high interest rate policy and Japan would implement an expansionary fiscal policy, laying the foundations for the systems we have today with an agreement. In the floating exchange rate system, states do not need to hold any reserves. The uncertainties of this system emerge quickly and progressively. While money functioned as a medium of exchange in trade, today it has started to be used in different functions. For example, it is also used as an investment and savings tool. Today, there is still no definitive and healthy solution to the monetary system issue, particularly the arbitrary money printing by central banks and the resulting inflation indirectly impoverish individuals. There are many examples of this. For instance, the uncontrolled money printing by the Federal Reserve during the COVID pandemic or the European Central Bank's money printing to solve the economic crises in Greece and Spain. As a result of these actions and needs after the 2008 economic crisis, an asset that could be called digital gold like Bitcoin has emerged as a new hope for a solution to humanity. Bitcoin with its security, inability to be arbitrarily printed and ease of transfer is rapidly progressing to become the global currency of the modern world. If you believe this video has been beneficial to you, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you for listening. See you in the next videos.